action. Hello, my name is Giovanni Davis, and I am a student in the Project Next Generation program at the Kankakee Public Library. Today is October 13, 2016, and I am at the Kankakee Public Library in Illinois interviewing the U.S. military veteran Dan Walker. Mr. Walker, when and where were you born? When and where? Uh, I was born in Columbus, Mississippi in 1905-0. What were your parents' names and what were their occupations? My father was uh, Willie Walker and my mother was Sarah Walker. My mother worked at Shapiro, and my father worked at Goose Battery. Do you have any brothers and sisters? If so, what were their names? Do you, and did any of them serve in the military? Yes, I have four sisters, two brothers. Uh, the oldest, oldest man uh, went to the military. My, my first, the firstborn went to the military and I Nobody else in the family went to the military. What were you doing with your life before you entered the service? In trouble. <laughs> like y'all, in trouble, not paying attention, not listening. So it's either go to jail or go to the military. I took the military. So it had changed your life? Yes, absolutely. And which branch of the service did you serve? United States Marine. Did you choose or did you just want to, um, what did what they? What was that question again? I'm sorry. And which branch of the service did you serve? I got that. The second question was. Did you enlist or were you drafted? I was, it, it, it was either or. I enlisted, but I was going to jail, so it didn't really matter. Oh, so you just went, you went <laughs> it's either or, either or. Why did you choose the specific branch of the military that you were in? Because it, uh, I, I, it was a short time. I, I went in the Marine Corps. And it, it was only two years. If you're good in the Army, they get they, they you had to work for go for four years. So I took the Marine Corps because it was only two years. So you just wanted a shorter time? Yes, sir. Vietnam, ducking yeah, bullets and all of that. I didn't want to do that for a long time. <laughs> Not for a long time. Two years, I, I could handle two years, but not four. <laughs> Would you tell me about when you were departed for training camp and your training camp experience? Well, I left uh, about five days before Martin Luther died, got killed. And when I got to training camp, all of that went out the window. It was Martin Luther King that got killed. So. It was, it was a bad experience for me because the, the, the brother had just got killed. So it, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a good thing. So it was like a bad thing? Absolutely. Martin Luther King had just died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know you don't know, y'all don't quite understand, but Martin Luther, he was the big dog, okay? He, he changed a lot of stuff for us when we were young that, that uh, I guess you guys don't really get to understand because there was rigid prejudice, but it was outward. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't behind, you know, like they, you think it is now. Then, if you, was, if you were black and white folks didn't like you, they, you knew it. They didn't guess you. It wasn't no, none of that. And Martin Luther changed all that, so yes, that was important. He was a good guy. Do you recall your instructors? If so, what were they like? Instructors in the military? Yes. No, I don't remember them. It was a trying time because Martin Luther was gone. I didn't pay attention to nothing they were talking about. After so they were just ready? I was there, and whatever happened, happened. I just wasn't paying any attention. <laughs> Did you receive any specialized training? If so, what is it? I went to recon school. It's a four-man unit that goes behind the enemy lines and kill people. <laughs> That's what I did. 
How did you adapt to military life, including the physical regiment, barracks, food, and social life? It was, it was even. I didn't like it, then I did like it. It was an even kind of deal. It wasn't uh, trauma, the trauma. It wasn't a bad experience, it wasn't a good experience. It was like neutral. So it was just like in the middle. Right, right, it was neutral. Um, where did you serve during your time in the service? What? Where? Yeah. Vietnam. Vietnam. What are some memories that you have of that experience? That's a good question. It was, I don't know if you, you guys can understand, it was, it was peaceful and crazy all at the same time because one minute everything is calm and peaceful and 15 minutes later, the whole world was blowing up. So that's, that's, that, that was my experience. I had good friends, but people were dying every 15 minutes, and it's kind of it's so kind of hard. It's like an on and off type thing. Oh, yeah. Every 15 minutes, something, something drastic was happening. If you were on the front lines, what combat action did you witness? I was on the front lines. People were dying every day. It would be me and you could be standing together today, right now, and 15 minutes later you would be gone. And there's nothing I can do about it. So that's that's an experience for me. What were some of your other duties that you had to do during the service? Um, I did combat. That's all I did was combat. I didn't have any other duties. I didn't, no, I didn't have any other duties to go fight, take, kill people, and come home in one piece. <laughs> that was it, bro. <laughs> what kinds of friendship did you form while serving and with home? Well, there, there were no friendships that were lasting because in a combat zone, people change every 15, every, every 30 days. Somebody else new is coming. Somebody didn't got killed, so it wasn't no. What was the question? I'm sorry. Who was like um the friendship? Right. I, I didn't have any of those. It was we were all trying to survive. I guess that's the friendship. We was just trying to survive and get home. So I, I didn't really have any friends. It wasn't no, it wasn't any friends because people changed every 15 minutes. Yeah, so you couldn't get a good connection with them. No, because people were dying. <laughs> I got it wounded, and then when I got wounded, all of the people that I, all of the, the young men that I knew before then, they went in one direction and I, I got wounded, so I didn't, I never saw them again. How did you stay in touch with family and friends back home? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. So you just couldn't contact them? No, I could have, but I didn't, it, it wasn't that kind of a, understanding it. It was survival. Survival means surviving. And home was not one of those things that I was worried about. I was worried about in the morning, am I going to be all right or not? I didn't care about what was going on at home. <coughs> what did you do for recreation or when you were off duty? Can't uh, recreation in a combat zone. All I did was listen to music. I, now I, I did listen to a lot of music. That was about it. With no movies, nothing. <laughs> Just music. Where were you when the war ended or your tour of duty ended? I was in California. So glad to get out of that madness. Um, I was glad it was over. So it was a blessing. Yeah, I, the blessing was surviving. Yes. Okay, that that was the blessing to be able to wake up and I don't have to dodge dodge bullets anymore. How did you return home from the service? How? Yes. We flew in. No, I, maybe I don't understand the question. 
Like, how did you return home after coming from the service? Like, did you come on a boat? Oh, no. We flew in from uh, from Vietnam on an airplane. I landed in San Diego. They cut my papers, and then I went. I jumped on another airplane and went home. How long did it take you from the plane ride coming back from the service to home? You including Vietnam? Yeah. Yeah, because that was like 13 hour ride, <laughs> and then it was only four hours from San Diego to Chicago. How were you received? How were you received by your family and community when you returned back? They didn't like us at all. They didn't like the Vietnam veterans at all because we were. We were considered baby killers. That's just how it was. They didn't like us. It was an unpopular old war, and that is what it was. So I didn't have any community. What did you ask me about community and how they treated me, or yeah, how, they how treated I felt you. about it? Yeah. Okay. I didn't have any feelings. All I wanted to do was get home. I looked in my father's face and he said he was glad to see me. All that other stuff didn't mean nothing. How did you adjust to the civilian life? Slowly, very slowly, because uh, there were no jobs, no benefits, no nothing. You couldn't get a job, they wouldn't they wouldn't hire us. So it was it was rough to say the least. So I had to find a living. I had to move Cali I had to move to California in order to get a job. Because I couldn't get a job in Kankakee. Can you keep. Have you remained in contact with or reunited with fellow veterans? If so, who? Uh, the group I'm in now, NAVVETS. That's the only group I I have a couple of I have a nephew that's in NAVVETS, so that's how I, I see him all the time. What have you done since separating from the military? Well, I went to school. I raised a family. I got four adult children. And I have peace of mind. And I didn't die in Vietnam. <laughs> that, that's all I could give. That's enough. That was enough for me, just being able to survive. How did your wartime or military experience affect your life? Well, it gave me discipline. Because uh, you had to set a goal, and then you'd have to decide how to make that happen. And that, that I got from the military. So, I, I, I'm done too bad for an old cat. What are some life lessons you learned from your military service experience? I just, I just told you. The, the ability to, to figure out what you need, how to, to achieve it, and make it happen. That's what I got from the military. What message would you like to leave for future generations who will do this interview? Well, the same thing. If you want to do something, then you have to decide, I want to do this. Then you ask the question, how do I get there? Okay? So you know, in order to get there, you must decide what I need, how to make it happen, and make it happen. That's, all. That's how you do that. Is there anything that we haven't discussed that you would like to add to this interview? No, you pretty much covered it. Closing, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to interview you and for participating in the Veteran, Veteran History Project. Well, you're welcome, young man. Thank you. Yes, sir.